the link to the weekly minutes is in the Zoom chat, if anyone would like to look for it there. Apologies, I'm a little slow. I haven't had coffee yet this morning. Yes, I am an addict. I won't lie. Andrew, it looks like you added a few agenda notes about KubeCon. Yeah, it's pretty short though, so it shouldn't take up too much time. I hope everybody has a fun time. I'll be um, following this up with a, um, an email and the not to do some future as well. Of course. All right, while everyone is filing in, um, please feel free to, of course, add items to agenda notes, open floor, there are any pull requests or bugs that need attention, add those as well, and we will get to them. And of course, if there is anyone new on the call, we'd love it if you would speak up and introduce yourself. Let us know how you found your way in here. Love to welcome you. All right, and it looks like the attendees log has settled down. Um, I suppose if there are new introductions, do we just want to go ahead and jump into the agenda? I think, Andrew, so far it's all you. Sure. Um, hey, folks, uh, KubeCon starts next week. Uh, KubeCon Europe in Valencia, um, and the uh, the KubeVert community has two separate um, presentations happening along in that. There is the virtual office hours that um, five people will be presenting KubeVert community and some features to the to the attendees, and also uh, Alicia Frozi will be doing a maintainer track talk about I think um, point zero. 0 0.52 or 53, um, 53, single thing. Um, unfortunately, I uh, discovered today that um, you do actually have to be a registered attendee in order to participate in that. I previously thought that it was available to anyone because it was a virtual thing. Um, so you, if you are interested in KubeCon, if you are interested in attending those and supporting uh, the people being involved in that, there are virtual all access tickets for 75 US dollars uh, still available and they will be available until the very last date runs on the 20th of May, next Friday. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, our two talks are on Wednesday um, and I'll be dealing with European time, 11.30 and 2.30, 11.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Um, yeah, so that was about it. I'll send out an email relatively shortly which includes that and slightly more information. That's about it. Thank you. Well, that's going to be a blast. I'm looking forward to looking up the recording when that drops. Um, all right. And then I don't see anyone adding anything to open floor. Go ahead and thank you for the pull request that needs a view. Pull that up. Just a shameless self promotion. Oh. No, it's wrong. It's too early for questions. Okay. <laughs> All right. So this is one of a pull request of mine that I, I submitted uh, last week and the week before. It's just about um, the CNCF provided us with uh, various pride alternatives of the Qbert logo. Um, I'd like to add them to the community repo. 
Um, uh, yeah, it's, I haven't seen any movement on it, so I thought I'd, I'd bring it here and uh, use this time. Sweet. Do we have anyone who can review and approve this? Noisy bunch today. All right. You know, we can just threaten everyone to keep adding it to the agenda until, you know, we get a volunteer. Well, with that, of course, um, if there's anyone on the call who wants to speak up about anything not on the agenda or wants help adding something to the agenda, I'm happy to do that on your behalf. Otherwise, going once, going twice. Sorry, there there was, I noticed um, oh. on the Slack channel, uh, it looks like it's still open. Um, the silly, yeah, do I have it open? Sorry for all the noise in the background. Um, basically put a thing in the Qubit dev um, uh, Slack channel yesterday asking for some attention on that. It looks like it got some thumbs up, but the PR is still open. Um, yeah, I just, just saw it today. So um, if anyone has the capacity to do anything about that, then that'd be good, I guess. Maybe there's another oh, PR. We almost should have a Slack channel section in our notes, huh? Um, and Alice is asking in the chat if we still do a bug scrub. Sure. Um, so we have been doing it when bugs are listed, but I can pull up and do ad hoc. Um, Why God I you'd think I'd be good at Google Docs by now. It's been two years of working from home. Okay, I'll jump into the box. Go Linter, that would probably be good. All right, I'm going to need some interaction if we're going to go through this um, on the call. I was trying to help. So this come up in the private conversation with Antonio and some other guys. Um, I think this is just uh, like plays harder to not forget that we want to do something like this. So we can move on. Um, this one was reported today on the Slack channel and it's used, uh, it's a problem with uh, non-root and block devices. Uh, we have already PR uh, up and so I will just link it. Uh, Lubo, do we accept this as uh, a cuber bug or we still don't know? 
Yeah, for sure it's QWERT bug, but um, we cannot reproduce it in our test uh, environment. I mean, we, because we spoke that it could be a DCSI driver. Yeah, sure, but I mean, we should handle this case uh, in the QWERT also, so. I mean, it could, be a, it could be a bug in the CSI driver that doesn't handle correctly the permission. That's why I ask uh, if you can try with the standard pod. Yeah, I mean, but we should be able to like also cover this in the in Qbeard and we are expecting, expecting to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so was there something I'm going to drop on the bug here? I posted a link to PR in the chat. I reposted it. I don't have that. Should we read a fix? Sweet. And Catherine, I think you also need to put uh, the triage label as. Okay. Um, there is the in the documentation triage and then accepted. That's it. Would that be right? I honestly need to practice this more. Yeah, it should be labeled. There as, it is. Uh, okay. This one is pretty interesting because it should not happen. Mm -hmm. um, can we ask to execute a command on the on the container disk? container <laughs> like for each container disk we actually launch a container and there you can you should see the original uh, original disk and so it would be pretty interesting to see what's the permissions there we want them to look up the permissions on the file I will I will try to comment on it. But we can accept the back. Thank you. 
we get the All right. Um, do we want to um, accept this and assign it to anyone? I believe Alex is working on this. Um, I don't have everybody's handle memorized yet. Uh, I think it's the tag uh, that you see in the previous comment. The oh, okay. Memory. Uh, no, sorry, the alkaline. Yeah. What is that? Um, in the oh, comment. There it is. The I tag, see. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Okay, um, I don't think I have enough permissions to do all of that. So would this type of device pass through specifically be its own? feature or uh, I'm not familiar with uh, GDB port or would it be so, part of those devices? <clears throat> actually, this is like, this is only adding a command line argument to the Qma that is found by libbird and the libbird will then bind the GDB port. Um, yeah, if we okay. briefly talk about this and I think we would like to have this have something like this and we will discuss it and see how to implement it because what's was the problem here is that you actually need to reach somehow the port and therefore you need the default pod network and in order to reach something on the pod network you can't use it for the vm so that's the limitation we see and um we would like to explore any ideas how to actually expose the TCP port without, without uh, limiting the pod, uh, usage of the pod network. Got it. Well, um, I don't seem to have permissions for like, accepting or anything. Are there any other thing, additional information that I can ask them for? I think we have everything what, what we need. Cool. And we need to get you the permissions. <laughs> okay, that'd be awesome.
Um, is there somewhere I need to file a pull request to get added to the work then? I actually need to check, so. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what if there's a, a proce process for that or. I will let you know. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Checking all out devices. I think Vasily is here on the call. And it's a neat idea. Um, yeah, if you're on call, do you want to speak to it? <clears throat> so sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, I think we discussed with uh, Itmar already this bug. It's about handling the C groups version two. Uh, we have a global variable there, uh, and uh, it causes some tr problems. Uh, let's say it's a map that we do not clean up. Uh, therefore, the memory consumption is growing. It's the first problem. The, um, the variable is inside word handler. And uh, another thing is that this variable will not survive the restart of the handler pod. So that needs to be checked if it's <clears throat> going to break something or not. So yeah, basically that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it makes sense. We can skip this one, it's already handled. And we can skip also the next one and the next one. Looks like that one has some activity already. I'm not going to dive into that one since it's. I think Alex had a look here and yeah, I think he confirmed yeah. that it's back I mean, because it, we, we were not expecting uh, the callback. Limit the range implementation. Um, I sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure. Like, I think we've seen this quite often, but it's when, like, imagine you, you update a VM or something and you forget to to update the result. Like, you do not grab the newly returned result from the API. That sometimes happens when, for instance, when when you create, like, um. I'm so what I'm trying to say is let's say you have a VM, you don't specify the namespace, and uh, you create it, it'll be created, but then you'll use, you'll forget to grab the result from the API. And that thing will have will have been defaulted, will have been used, it will use the a default uh, namespace. I'm not sure if that could be it or not, at least that issue. Usually, I've seen that issue multiple times when the libvmi factory functions are used. I can take a look at this one, I think. 7681. At least I'll try to read it. Oh, 
Okay, so that's actively being worked on this. I left a comment, um, so it should be clear. Great, awesome. I believe Alice is working on this one, so we can skip it. Yeah, I have already fixed. I just need to implement the task, the functional task. Thank you. That's a fun question. I think we all need that on Graviton to start doing better CI on everything. Um, Are we going to leave that open? I, I think we can um, ask if the answer is good enough. Uh, okay. If nobody has any idea like how to help more. So what I don't Okay, given that's in CI, I'm going to guess you guys are on that one. I hope so. <laughs> that's awesome. Attention to details. That probably deserves an update. 
I, I think we can ask if, I mean, uh, any request or any PR that would update the uh, demo would be accepted. So. That would probably be no. Hi, hello. Yes. Uh, would you mind take a look at the proposal for parallel testing for ARM64? Hi, Howard. Thanks. Uh, actually, I was about to reply you on the issue. Um, so, okay. yeah, let's do it here. Um, generally, we we agree that uh, the ARM will be uh, like step forward for the community, and therefore we want to support you. Uh, so okay. take this as a, a proof, and you can start testing. And once you will feel confident, uh, we can join the cluster to do our pro and give you relevant access and talk about how we can enable the testing. So okay, cool. Thank you for your work. Okay. Uh, and uh, I put two tasks here. So you do do you think I should add more or it's just fine? I think this this is enough for the first step. And then we can uh, like discuss how to how to integrate the cluster to the pro and so on. Sorry. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that gets us sufficiently far back in our bugs that everything's covered. Perhaps. Um, these kind of issues can be and can happen with emulation. So yeah, the only thing we can try is to um reproduce it with like plain cumul and yeah, just to see if maybe we are doing something wrong. Okay. Oh gosh, Windows on software emulation. I believe it's like problem of the underlying uh, underlying operating system that the user use for the Qbert or Kubernetes. Oh, really? And 
yeah and he's saying it's on the cloud server so i guess yeah. maybe they don't really expose every uh virtualization features It seems to be like nested, nested use case here. Yeah, it would. Um... And I'm not sure if, if... What's that? Just know that I'm not sure if, if it's supposed to work. Yeah. It's something like when you do um, Windows on bare metal and inside a... Um, Windows, you have the, the subsystem, Linux subsystem. Yeah, I'm. Hmm. I will try to ask around. Okay. Well, thank you all for your um, assistance going through bugs today. The activity was greatly appreciated. Switch that to like, or uh, it was specifically added to PRs for review. Um, yeah, this is a documentation for a CV, but it wasn't me who added this to to, to the agenda. <laughs> Yeah, it was there is mine. Ah, oh, sorry. Hi, sorry. It was about uh, the uh, Slack, right? Exactly, exactly. Nice. And uh, yeah, I saw something that was like, "Yo, there's a docs PR that needs approval." It's like, "Oh, I love documentation." So yeah. I'll, I'll okay. give that voice. Okay, uh, I got a couple of reviews already, and I think I fixed the comments. I resolved the comments as well. Awesome. So, so, so yeah, an approval would be nice. <laughs> yeah. so. I think it was it's not already approved regardless. Uh, it's uh, it has a, a GTM a label, but not approval. I mean, well, it's so that gone. Regardless. No, it no, I don't like... have the, that juice. Uh. Yeah, we, we need someone with uh, approval rights. Yeah, yeah. superpowers. <laughs> I will try to find somebody to have a look on it. Okay, thank you. Thank for you. That out. Speaking of approval powers, hey, look at that. Awesome. I think that was all three of those then. Thank you, Jed.
is that like a, a proposal for um, a CI testing? I'm not sure it's CI testing. I think it's more like framework to to like diagnose issues with networking, but I'm reading incorrectly. So this might be interesting to like um, users which have actual actual clusters and maybe they want to uh, check the networking setup and and so on. I almost wonder if that would be part of on VM. I mean, for for any whether it's Kubert or any hypervisor, would that be the hypervisor's duty or the workload orchestration? Miguel, do you have any insights on this? Uh, I spaced out for a second. Like, what's the the question, Catherine? Oh, um, I'm I'm just looking at the uh, the topic here that hasn't got any attention in our Google group, the mailing list. Um, it looks like he's describing um, being able to have an awareness of live mm -hmm. VMs and their networking health uh, while running. So. I don't know. I guess it seems to me that that would be part of workload orchestration, but I, I, I'm unaware unless, I mean, I suppose in an AWS scenario, there are like liveness or health checks. Yeah, this is a little bit like I can provide a little bit of insight on this. Like uh, this is not so much as a uh, liveness or readiness. It's, like the idea is to provide a framework when you can provide and run these arbitrary checkups. Like the 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 current checkup that uh, this team is working on is actually I think is making sure that the latency between two VMs is below a certain number. I guess that the use case is like so I'm some telco telco company and I just want to make sure that I can uh, operate under a specific threshold. And so I run this checkup and if it gives me the green light, I'm good to go. If no, I, if, if it doesn't, I need to go and tune up my configuration in a certain way or just uh, try another plugin or something like that. I guess that's the um, idea behind this uh, framework. Okay, is that type of a thing that is usually present in other hypervisors? I do not know. I know that in probably in one of those PRs, there's like a link to a document uh, where mm -hmm. I know that they, they have provided like some sort of analysis of what's the uh, state of the art on this uh, topic. And they've analyzed a couple of uh, alternatives. I saw that table, but I actually requested like an analysis of that. Like, uh, why didn't you use like one of these uh, and went to invent uh, yet another solution for it but i did not i do not remember seeing the results of that i can look for that document out of bands and add it to to the the community meeting document if it's useful but yeah the, the i think it's fairly well described right here i'm at least motivation goals and all that seem to be. Um, should we um, encourage them to create a Cooper bug and submit this as a part of a, I guess, draft PR or something like that? Or no, I don't know. How, how do we do proposals, I suppose? That is a good question. Uh, there's a, on the community uh, repo, qbird slash community, there's a folder there for, for design proposals. I'm not sure if this would actually fit that, but it's the closest I can think of. 
yeah, design proposal, the, the third one from the top. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. I know that that's there. So I think the objective of this this email was just to get some feedback from the community on the usability and um, what types of other checkups they would envision and, and things like that. I think it's a fairly good idea to link this to the to the queue for design proposals. I don't know. But I can say that they're nearing having like an MVP, I think. Got it. Okay, right, cool. I learned something today. Um, yeah, I, I threw that stuff. Um, just an email. Uh, it's a repost from two weeks ago, but there is a couple of conferences coming up um, at the their call for proposals and May 27th. So I'll probably send a reminder out next week as well, because that will be upon us sooner rather than later. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for all of the engagement today. It's good to be supported uh, going through all of this stuff. Is there any last comments or requests? Going once, you can go twice. And thank you all. See you same time, same place next week. Or actually, when it is Cooper Valencia? Uh, it is next week. So should we, I can send out notices and stuff like that if we want to cancel during KubeCon or? Uh, well, how, how many people present at this meeting are expecting to be attending either in person or virtually? Fair question. And then, uh, show of hands with, with all your cameras on. Okay, well, um, it doesn't. I, I think like... we may as well run it. Um, yeah, we'll run if it. I have the capacity. I'll I'll jump in as well, but I may not Sounds be able good. to. Um, and if no one's there, then it's a short meeting. Sure thing. All right. Well, thanks. I'll I'll be here next week. Hope to see you then. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.